Hello, my name is Frank Christensen and I'm the coordinator of officials for IFAF in Europe. Today we're going to look at goal line coverage. So whether you're a deep official, a wing official, or an umpire for that matter, covering the goal line is extremely important. And today we're going to look at how best to do that. But before we get to the game film, let's have a look at what the MOFO has to say and how that can help us on the field. We go to section 13.5 uh, wings and goal line place. An initial position says, number two, you have primary responsibility for Team B's goal line if the ball is snapped from on or inside Team B's seven yard line. And three goes on to say you have primary responsibility for Team A's goal line if the ball is snapped from on or inside Team A's five yard line. For responsibility to what happens in section C1, if you have responsibility for either team's goal line immediately after the snap, move directly towards it to rule on the score or an accurate forward progress. And at team B's goal line, two, on a running play, you must be at the goal line before the ball carrier to rule on whether the ball penetrates the plane. Do not move towards Team A's backfield to let players pass you. As for the deep wings on goal lines, initial position, and this is uh, when the snap is between Team B's 7 and 20 yard lines, and that also means that if the line of scrimmage is the 21, you are more than welcome to line up your usual 20 yards from the line of scrimmage, which would put you at the B1, and then after the snap you can, you can move as, as you want to. It says, be on the sideline at the goal line. Always be on the sideline off the field. Three, be able to see at least half of the goal line and your sideline in the end zone. When play terminates on or near the goal line, you must be on the goal line to rule on penetration of the plane. And four, be prepared to rule on forward progress within two yards of the goal line. This should be part of your pre-snap routine if you're at the goal line at the snap. And then when the ball is snapped from inside Team B's uh, seven yard line, beyond the sideline extended approximately two yards beyond the end line. For the back judge, uh, we go to 15-5 initial positioning when the snap is between the 15 and the 30. Take up initial position on the goal line. And in terms of response to what happens, move to observe all players in your area of responsibility. If a pass is thrown into the end zone, move to the best position to rule on the end of the pass. If the pass is thrown into a deep corner of the end zone, this will normally be somewhere on the end line between the hash marks and the nine yard marks. And then uh, what I've done is I've, I've put together uh, uh, a few uh, paragraphs for any official that is on the goal line pylon. So that could be uh, wings coming down to the pylon, could also be deep wings starting there. If you see the ball carrier is stopped short of the goal line, blow your whistle, come in and sell the dead ball spot. If appropriate, call out short to tell your colleagues of that. If the pass is thrown short of the goal line, remain on the line to rule on penetration of the plane. If the pass is thrown into the end zone, move to the best position to rule on the end of the pass. So you don't necessarily have to stay on the pylon if the pass goes into the end zone. If you have goal line responsibility, straddle the goal line. Don't run after the player into the end zone unless there's a threat of trouble by or against him. But do turn to keep your eyes on him to observe late hits or unsportsmanlike conduct. And finally, Maintain the touchdown or safety signal until you know the referee has seen it, but keep your eyes on the players. Don't look to the referee until all action has ceased. And that was the theoretical part. Now let's have a look at some game film. So here we have a good look at the back judge. Now initially I would advise him, regardless of the formation, to line up in the middle of the field. So position three, that just gives you the best opportunity to cover both sidelines. And, and here we're lined up 
uh, at around the B8 or 9. So we should have a fairly good uh, feel for where the goal line is. So that very good, you know, initial reaction backwards. Uh, that's that's exactly what we have at the snap. No reading, no nothing. Just start moving backwards, uh, and then, you know, once the play develops, you can you can slow down if you want to, but certainly have a have a feel for where the goal line is, so that we we do stop on the goal line. There's absolutely no reason here to move into the end zone, but and also good pinch after the play. So so a couple of good things. Very good reaction right here. Uh, be better to stop at the goal line and then once the play stops, good uh, recovery, good uh, pinch back towards the play. Now the line of scrimmage is getting a little bit closer to the goal line so the, uh, the back judge is lined up on the goal line which is good and he's even in position three which is perfect uh, but the main thing here is that as long as the end zone is not threatened you can you can feel free to go ahead and stay on the goal line so this is a little too early to move off the goal line if and if you want to move off the goal line it should be because you're being threatened by receivers in which case you should probably move you know if not all the way then at least very close to the end line here you'd be perfectly fine just to stay on the goal line and then and then rule on the play from here now it turns into a, a short pass or a run and then in in that situation i would advise all back judges to just stay on the goal line so that we have the back judge on the goal line uh if the the play should end up with a touchdown In comparison, this referee, or this back judge rather, does everything right. Uh, good initial back pedal, staying in the middle field. When the ball is, is thrown, he moves out of the way, and he's on the goal line as the ball arrives. So again, you know, doesn't wait to, to read the play to react uh, as we, we don't want the deep officials to do. Good, good speed there, uh, facing off to the, uh, to the play good awareness of where the goal line is and stays on the goal line so that once this play happens now he's in perfect position to rule on whether the the knee was down before the ball broke the plane this is you know all but impossible to do if you're in the middle of the end zone or or in the backfield or in the uh end line or somewhere in the in the in the field of play so this is perfect uh position perfect movement perfect uh the way that he ends up on the goal line, ready to, to signal here or, or to rule on the play and good signal. So well done by this back judge. We're now moving to the deep wings and we're looking at the deep wing across the field from us. And he does a really good job of, of initially backpedaling, but then he needs to have a feel for where the goal line is. And here he, he overshoots the goal line. Uh, so, um, in your pre-snap, you know, get a feel for where the goal line is, and then once you once you get close to it, uh, be able to stop at it. And if you get pushed or you get pressured by the players, uh, the place to move is on the goal line extended away from the pylon, so we still have the goal line, uh, and we can rule on it just in case it, it gets threatened. Here, actually, both the uh, the deep wing and the back judge end up. Uh, too deep in the end zone. Now the back judge does a fairly good job of, of moving towards the play but both of them should stay on the goal line or should stop on the goal line so that we have that very important line covered at the end of this play. In comparison this deep wing does a very good job staying on the goal line extended so he gets threatened by players here, he needs to get out of the way. And here he does a very good job of staying wide, uh, so that giving him a, a good angle to see the play and to see if the if the pylon is threatened. And, and, and the back judge also here does a good job of, of, of staying on the goal line, getting close to the play. There's no reason to stay in the middle of the field here, so feel free to come out and, and get closer to the play uh, so that we have um, 
presence and we have good angles to everything we need to cover here. We're now moving on to the wings and here we have a great example of both how to do it and how not to do it. So if we start out with the, riff, uh, with the wing at the bottom, this is exactly how we want this right at the snap moving to the goal line and officiating from there. This is perfect goal line mechanics from, from this wing. Now if we're looking at, at the top of the screen, this wing official stays on the line of, uh, of scrimmage and we really want him down on the goal line. And right here is why, you know, this ball is, is going to get caught. If, if this receiver were tackled here or pushed back here, uh, we would have a very difficult time ruling on a score or not. So we really want the uh, this wing official to be on the goal line. And then after the play, you know, it'd be a lot better to focus out of bounds on the uh, on the scoring player instead of, of of coming down to the goal line now where it's too late and then keeping your eyes in the field of play where nothing really happens. So uh, both the, the good and the, uh, the room for improvement here in one and the same play. In this last play, we're also looking at the wing across the field, and he does a good job of, of getting to the goal line, but really, the reason I, I included this was they both do a very good job of pinching in, selling the touchdown score. This is exactly how we want uh, wings to come in, especially on the goal line, but really any uh, tight spot. But here's just a very good example of, of covering the goal line, coming in with a solid touchdown signal. Now, uh, these two wings move as they come in with the signal, and I have no problem with that. I think this helps sell the play. And that was the training tape. I hope you found something you can use on the field.